The running joke in the front-end world is that there is not a day that goes by without a new JavaScript framework being released. But what about building a new JavaScript runtime? There are many reasons why you might want to roll your own, such as building an interactive web app with a Rust backend, extending your platform with a JavaScript plugin system, and more. That sounds complicated, you say? Well, this is easier than you might think. And to prove it, let's spend the next 5 minutes building the basics of a runtime using Rust. This is a great exercise which will give you the chance to get to know Rust better while understanding how JavaScript runs under the hood. We'll start by installing Rust and creating a Rust project using Cargo. A JavaScript runtime has two main components, a JS engine and an event loop. We'll be able to cover these components with a couple of dependencies. Dino Core is a crate which abstracts away interactions with the V8 JavaScript engine. V8 is a complex project with thousands of APIs and Dino Core simplifies it by providing a JS runtime structure that encapsulates a V8 engine instance called an isolate and allows its integration with an event loop. Tokyo is an asynchronous Rust runtime which can be used as an event loop and will be responsible for interacting with OS abstractions like network sockets or the file system. Next, let's define a Rust function which creates an instance of J's runtime based on a file system module loader. This will be responsible for the JavaScript execution. The runjs function encapsulates the whole lifecycle that our JavaScript code will go through. But, in order to do that, we need to create a single threaded Tokyo runtime to execute our runjs function. So, our Rust program will initialize a Tokyo runtime which will execute the runjs function which, in turn, will use Dino Core to execute any JavaScript present in the example.js file. To test this, let's open example.js and simply print something on the screen. Note that we are using the Dino Core print function here, which is a globally available built-in object provided by the Dino Core Rust crate. Back in the terminal, we can now run the project and see the message correctly printed on the screen. So, in just 25 lines of Rust code, we created a simple JavaScript runtime that can execute local files. Of course, we can do much more interesting things than this. One thing I don't like right now is the fact that we need to use Dino Print while all established JS runtimes are providing an implementation of the console API. So let's build our own implementation. We'll start by creating a runtime.js file that initializes and makes the console object globally available. The functions console log and console error will accept multiple parameters, stringify them, and prefix each message with log or error. To ensure we are not polluting the global scope, we are executing this code in an immediately invoked function expression. If we didn't do that, the arguments to message helper function would be available globally in our runtime. After we include this code in our binary and execute it on every run, we can go back into the example file and replace the Dino print message with the more familiar console commands. This is a great first step, but we can take things one step further and add more complex APIs to the mix. Back in the runtime.js file, let's add a runjs object with three file system API methods attached to it. Inside these methods, we are using Dino Core to match JavaScript functions to Rust functions. So, back in the main.rs file, we'll need to define the associated Rust functions and mark them with the op attribute. Next, Dino Core needs to know about these Rust functions and we can register them via an extension which allows us to configure the JS runtime instance and expose different Rust functions to JavaScript. Now, we can go back to our example.js file and use the file API as well. Impressive, right? Of course, these are the very basics of a JS runtime, but if you guys are interested, we'll be happy to explore this further. If you found this walkthrough informative, you should check out some of our other videos and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, thank you for watching.